Hey all, Amanda here with your sneak peek prediction video for episode 8 of American Ninja Warrior season 13. This is our third of four semifinal episodes where only the top 15 ninjas and top 3 women will advance to the Vegas finals. The ninjas with the two fastest times of the night also run against each other in a power tower showdown at the end of the night where the winner earns a safety pass ensuring that if the owner falls anywhere on stage 1 or 2 of the Vegas finals they get a second chance to run that course again. Again, I have no affiliation with this show, nor do I have any insider information, but as always, I will do my best to share what I have heard and take my best guess as to how each episode may unfold. But as you all know, with this show, anything can and probably will happen. But before we get into that, like the ninjas running tonight, first, we have to get through this 10 obstacle course. Again, we start with the shrinking steps. Athletes run up five steps, race down an incline, that decrease in size as the gaps between them widen. They then jump to grab a rope that swings them to the landing platform. Next, it's the return of the double twister. This consists of two sets of free-spinning arch-shaped handles. Ninjas jump to grab the first handle, and while building momentum to lash A to the second handle, they must keep the handle and their body straight as the handles rotate 360 degrees. Then, the ring chaser is back. Athletes work across several monkey bars, angled on a slight decline. However, once the athlete grabs the first bar, it releases a 14-inch ring that starts to roll down the track alongside the athlete. If the competitor is able to grab the ring before it falls off the track and into the water, they then hook it onto a peg and gain momentum to jump with the ring and hook another peg several feet away. If they miss the 14-inch ring, they then must use a smaller 8-inch ring attached to a split handle and hook the peg with that. Tonight's first balance obstacle is the Diamond Dash. This obstacle consists of four boards suspended by support cables that allow them to tilt back and forth. Ninjas must step in the center to avoid flipping the board and hitting the water. Then, we get another all new obstacle, and already, I feel I have to warn you this one is dangerous. I myself hate hearing spoilers, so I'm really one that tries to avoid spoiling things for others, but I did watch a sneak peek rhyme just so I could try to see this new obstacle and I was not ready for what I saw. The new obstacle is called Drop Zone, and it consists of three moving pieces. I will try my best to explain, but I'm sure my explanation is going to make it seem more complicated than it actually is. The first piece is a pole that ninjas must turn from the right side position to the front position from how the ninja would be seeing it, turning it counterclockwise. Once the bar is facing forward, it drops straight down. Ninjas then build momentum to grab the next piece, which is triangle shaped. Ninjas turn that piece clockwise from the back position to the front, and then it drops straight down. They then lash A to another pole, turn it counterclockwise, and jump to the landing platform. I've only seen this in action once, but already, I see a major concern. Athletes are really going to have to be mindful of where their heads are when these contraptions come crashing down. Ninjas usually like keeping their L's when on an upper body obstacle, but this time... Just like I thought the ninjas were going to break their arms, holding onto the corkscrew as it dropped and turned, I can't see this obstacle sticking around without some kind of modifications being made. We'll see. Then, athletes scale a 14 and a half foot warped wall, and then start the back half by thrusting themselves up a salmon ladder, using a bar to land on rungs above them. Then, returning from last week, it's padlock. It's a great obstacle, but my guess couldn't have been further off. In my opinion, it resembles a combination lock more than anything else. It acts like one too, as ninjas have to jump between three moving wheels to make it to the landing platform at the other end. The first wheel has an opening at the top, and ninjas must turn the wheel 180 degrees so they can put their hands through the opening, now at the bottom, and lash A to the second wheel. The second wheel has a ledge at the side, and ninjas must move the wheel so that the ledge is at the bottom. They then lower themselves to be able to hold on to that ledge with their hands, and lash A to the last wheel. The last wheel turns slightly to the left and right, and ninjas must flip the wheel so they move from the front of the wheel to the back, where they can jump to the landing platform. Again, I'm sure I'm making these obstacles sound a lot more complicated than they are, but it's the best I can do. Tonight's split decision should be a fun one. Back from Season 11, the balance obstacle will be the diving boards. The original obstacle had three boards, each supported by a spring, underneath the center of each board. The second board was shorter than the first and the third, and ninjas had to keep their balance as they crossed. I would not be surprised if a fourth board was added, but we'll see. The upper body obstacle will be the dungeon, 
that returns from last year. This obstacle starts with a vertical wall that athletes had to climb up using peg poles. Once they reach the top of the wall and grab the handle at the top, the board flips and becomes horizontal, with the ninjas now at the far back of the board. They then have to navigate the wall from underneath, then lashay to another vertical wall. Once they grab the second wall, they then must turn the wall 180 degrees to jump to the landing platform. Either decision leads to the final obstacle, the 35-foot spider trap. Ninjas must press their hands and feet against the sides of a plexiglass chute to ascend to the top. They also have to push open three sets of doors, each door weighing 50 pounds, at the 10-foot, 22.5-foot, and 35-foot marks. Again, only the top 15 athletes per night advance to the finals, as well as the top three women. And here's where things get fun. According to the numbers, we have 79 ninjas left to run over the next two semifinal episodes, but in reality, we are actually down to 77. Between the Olympics, trying to figure out what's actually happening on this show, plus just the rest of life in general, I know I'm way behind in my recap videos, but I am working on them, and I'm keeping up with everything I can behind the scenes. Last week, 32 runs were shown to some degree, but in fact, 41 athletes ran. And of those extra cut runs that we did not see, nor were we told about, two athletes were replaced. Alyssa Beard replaced a woman who withdrew. I do not know which woman, nor why she withdrew, but Alyssa fell on the spinning bridge and is not advancing to the finals. Grant McCartney also replaced a man who withdrew, but I don't know who, nor why he needed to be replaced, but Grant fell on the padlocks and is still not advancing to Vegas. Regardless of what the show tells us, or tries to keep from us, I have a full list of everyone who ran, and everyone who advanced, so by the end of episode 9, I will have two extra people unaccounted for, and then I will try to find the reasons for their departures from the semifinals. So, I may make predictions on people that are no longer in the competition, but that cannot be helped. So, I will stick with the list of 79 names I have, and I'm going to do my best to once again split them into groups. I have no idea who will run either of our last two nights, so I'm going to try and touch on the ones that I think will advance regardless, and give some basic mentions to others I think may appear. A lot of them I've already discussed, so please bear with me. I'm trying to make sense out of chaos here. My first breakdown was surprisingly accurate, but my breakdown for last week was way off. So now, rather than basing things off order of appearance, Based on episode, I'm just going to go with an editor's standpoint and split names. I think we'll have 39 runs tonight and 38 runs next week, making the real 77 athletes left, not the 79 names we have, assuming no one else was replaced. We also have 13 women's names left, although we will only see 12 run. I'm guessing 6 each night. This may be more of a disjointed prediction than normal, as I think the only way I can really do this is by theorizing on both episodes a little. Hopefully, this video makes sense, and worst case scenario, it doesn't, but you were still amused anyway. Let me know if you agree with my breakdown or not, and why or why not, and what you can see coming up. This time, we'll start with the ladies. As I mentioned, we have 13 names left on the women's board, but one had to withdraw. Of those 12, only 6 will advance. Of the women confirmed to be running tonight, Megan Martin is my top pick. Anyone who's been following my videos knows that Megan Martin is my favorite female ninja, and I will always cheer for her. I can definitely see her being at the top of the leaderboards tonight. Since Megan is in tonight's episode, I will assume Jessie LeBrecq will be running next week. LeBrecq is easily one of the strongest female competitors in this field, and I expect her to be at the top of the leaderboards episode 9. Mermaid Ninja Charity LeBlanc has been confirmed to run tonight, and I can see her advancing to the finals. Brittany Durant has also been confirmed to run tonight, and I hope she does well. Axel or Megan Rowe runs tonight, and I hope she does well. Teen rookie Sophia Lavallee runs tonight, but I do not see her advancing. I can see at least one, if not two other women running tonight, and of the names I have left, I would say Lindsay Eskelson, Alyssa Barcelona, and Taylor Amon all have great chances of advancing whenever they run. Megan Budway, Heather Wessinger, Jamie Ross, and Ava Colasanti still have yet to be seen, but personally, I cannot see any of them advancing. I do hope Flip's girlfriend Jamie does well, though. As for the men, there are only five men left who advance from episode one that have yet to be seen. I have already discussed these ninjas in previous prediction videos, as well as the recap videos for whichever episode they ran, so feel free to go back and get caught up. The five include Vinnie Castronova, Dan Wentworth, 
and Brian Billingmeyer, who I cannot see advancing, and Jonathan Godbout and Nate Pardo, both teen rookies, and both of whom I can see heading to Vegas. Jonathan and Nate have both been confirmed to be running tonight. Nine men remain, who advance from episode two, and teen rookie Josiah Pipple is the only athlete from that list that I can see advancing. Josiah will be running tonight. Other athletes from episode two that have already been discussed in previous videos include Brian Montanez, Victor Chan, who I think I called Jimmy last video, my apologies, Mike Beadle, Cody Johnston, Vincent Payne, DC Banks, Jose Gomez, and Francisco Barraja. I do not think any of these athletes will advance. 17 men from episode 3 remain unseen, but of the ones confirmed to be running tonight, I can see all of them advancing. The Dream Chaser Tyler Gillette runs tonight, and I hope to see him advance. I would not be surprised to see his friend and fellow competitor, the Maker Ninja Kevin Carbone, run tonight, and if he does, I hope to see him advance. Teen rookies Vance Walker and Enzo Wilson run tonight, and I think they both have excellent chances at advancing. I would not be surprised to see Vance hit a buzzer. RJ Roman runs tonight, so make sure you don't blink or you'll miss it. I was furious his stunning qualifying run was digested, and I'm hopeful he is just as incredible tonight and that we'll see his run in fall. I expect him to be at the top of the leaderboards with a fast time and another buzzer under his belt. Brett Sims runs tonight, and I think he has a good chance of advancing. I hope to see him hit another buzzer, but I think he can definitely go far enough fast enough to make it through regardless. I would love to know why friend and fellow Ninja veteran Ryan Stratus did not have his call answered when he applied this season. This show has no loyalty to their athletes. Other ninjas from episode 3 that I've already discussed include Tony Miles, Josh Wagg, Ben Whitlow, Bob Reese, Brad Giles, Todd Barogias, and Glenn Davis. I do not see any of these ninjas advancing. Other ninjas who qualified episode 3 include Nico Gentry, Deshaun Harris, Austin Hare, and firefighter Dan Palizzi. I hope Dan does well, but I do not see any of these athletes advancing either. 13 men remain unseen from episode 4, but the four that were confirmed to be running tonight, again, all top my list of those advancing. OG ninjas David Campbell and Brian Crutch both run tonight after both being digested in their qualifying runs. I hope to see both men in full and hope they both hit buzzers. I will be cheering for both of these men until they retire from this sport. And roommates and training partners Adam Rail and the Papal Ninja Sean Bryan have also been confirmed to run tonight. Sean is usually one of the last men standing in any season, and although Adam is an incredible competitor, his speed has led to devastating upsets in the past. Hopefully, Sean has a calming influence on him, where Adam would push Sean to increase his speed and confidence. I really like this pairing, and hope they can both hit buzzers tonight. Other athletes we have not seen from Episode 4 include Devin Alexander, Mike Wright, and Matt Bradley, who I cannot see advancing. Roommates Austin Gray, Jonah Munez, and Nate Hansen have not yet been seen, and I would expect them to all run the same night. I hope all three do well whenever they run. Roommates Jake Murray and Ethan Swanson still have yet to run, and I can see both being held over to episode 9, and can see those two facing off in the Power Tower showdown. Taj Harrington still has yet to run, and I hope he can do well enough to advance. He was a very likable ninja last year, who had his qualifying run digested. And 34 men who qualified episode 5 have yet to run in the semifinals, and no men from that episode have been confirmed to run tonight. However, of the men remaining, I can see friends Kyle Soderman and Hunter Girard run the same night and both advance. I can also see Cal Flores and Flip Rodriguez run the same night, and you know I'll be cheering the loudest for my flipper to advance, as well as his young protege Cal. I can see twins Nathan and Marquise Green run the same night, and hope they can both advance, but they are still new ninjas. I would just hate to see one advance and one just miss out. Teen rookie Kai Beckstrand and his father Brian have yet to be seen, and I hope both do well. I can see Kai making it far enough fast enough. I can also see Jamie Ron advancing to Vegas, and would love to see him hit a buzzer. 
Cam Baumgartner and Donovan Matoyer were definite standard performances for me last year, and I hope both can make it to Vegas whenever they run. I hope Tyler Yamauchi, Eric Middleton, Sam Gray, Rue Yori, and Kyle Schultz do well and can make it far enough fast enough to advance. Other athletes from Episode 5 that we still have yet to see include John Mack, Sam Folsom, Mike Salenzi, Joe Brown, Ben Martin, Jason Barber, Andrew Stoinski, and Marcelino Riley. I do not see any of these ninjas advancing. So, those are my predictions for episode 8, but no matter how far off I am, by the end of the episode, I will know exactly who's left to run episode 9 and can hopefully provide a more detailed prediction. I will be working on the last few episode recaps as well, but in the meantime, if any of you have any theories, please feel free to play along. Leave a comment below on what you think of the season so far, who you'll be cheering for to take it all, or any other ninja-related content you'd like to discuss. Check out NBC every Monday night to catch all the action, then come back here afterwards for our full recap. Check local listings for details, and until next time, enjoy the show!